Hey, what's happening guys? Please pardon the fan noise <clears throat> and the uh, crude surroundings here. I'm doing a little remodeling on the lab bench and uh, things are out of sorts. Anyway, this video is especially for my friend Tim, but for any of you who have questions about this. So, Tim's just learning about electronics and uh, going over some schematics. And he's just getting an understanding of transistors. And he understands the transistor is basically a switch. He says, if the transistor is a switch, what are all these resistors for? We want What are they doing? And I told him they are just helping to balance out how the transistor works. I said, but in this particular drawing, this transistor is not operating really as a switch. It's operating as an amplifier. And I said, to understand that, we need to talk about the... the operation modes of a transistor to better understand it so like this is a typical transistor output curve okay and we're starting here with our v out on the vertical scale and our voltage in on the horizontal and they both start at zero so with zero volts in you're obviously going to get zero volts out and that's going to happen for a little while until you pass the uh, voltage drop of the transistor, whether it's, you know, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts. But that can vary with a lot of things, even just the temperature. So it's going to be a range. And that range right here, where we have from zero to very little input volt, but still zero output volt, is called the cutoff range. When we, we can put the transistor into that state, that mode, and it will be as if we have turned the switch off. All right? So then as the voltage progresses a little bit more, we reach a point, say it's, uh, we'll call it 0.7 volts DC. Well, now we're starting to see a little bit of voltage out. And we see as the voltage keeps climbing until we actually reach this point here, we have a climbing output voltage. And this region is called the linear region. And this is like, this is the magic zone where you can get all the good work out of a transistor. But once we have reached the point where it cannot give us any more output, now we have reached what is called the saturation zone. So these are our, these are three of the modes, there are more. This is cutoff, where nothing is coming out. The linear range, where we have a range of things coming out. And saturation, where it's fully on and that means the voltage here will be like VCC minus voltage forward you know minus any resistances in there you know basically it's what you're what you're putting in minus any kind of insertion loss so whoops those are the regions that your transistor can operate in so this transistor, and, it, and this is just a standard NPN transistor, BJT, you can tell because the arrow is pointing out. If the arrow were pointing in, it would be a PNP, and this would be a different discussion. But this is operating as an amplifier. So what we've done is we, we've gone into the data sheet, and I'm not going to go into the math on this. This is just a, a general understanding. We've gone into the data sheet, and we found out where that linear range is for our transistor. And what we want to do is we want to put the neutral state of our transistor. Like say, say we're driving the transistor with nine volts, okay? So there's nine volts, there's zero volts. You know, here's our neutral line, you know, 4.5 volts. We wanna keep that transistor right here in the middle of that linear zone when it is neutral, meaning no input signal. So what we've done is we have created 
a voltage divider right here. R1 and R2 create a voltage divider that is going to hold that transistor open in the middle of that linear region and allow it to swing up and down, which will give us basically an AC type output. And that's what it's doing. It is amplifying that signal that is coming in. So this, these two particular resistors here are, are your base biasing resistors. We are biasing that base to hold it in the middle of the linear region so that we have a maximum amount of swing forward or up and a maximum of swing down. If we were to change that voltage that we biased it, say we biased it a little bit up here, well now we have very little swing up but a lot of swing down and we could do it the other way. We could bias it here, have very little swing down and a lot of swing up. Okay. That's actually something that is done or used to be done with vacuum tube amplifiers. You could change the headroom, meaning the point at which it's saturated. You could start higher to saturation or lower to saturation, giving you more range. So that is the point of resistors one and two. Now let's get to resistor number four. This is your emitter. And I'm going to call it the runaway resistor. This resistor here is going to prevent your transistor from burning up under normal circumstances. You know, if there's a spike or something, it's not going to help much. But a characteristic of the BJT transistors is the hotter they get. Well, okay. By moving electrons through here, a byproduct of that work is heat. That's just basic physics. The hotter they get, the better they conduct. The better they conduct, the more they the more they heat. So you've got heat leads to conduction which leads to heat. And without this to limit the conduction and therefore limit the heat, the transistor can go into a runaway mode and just burn up. All right? And that gets us down to resistor three, our collector resistor. For that, we need to go to the data sheet and we want to find out, you know, what the max uh, collector uh, current is. And we want to go under that range. Now, there's a lot of math going into picking this particular resistor. And when you're using it as an amplifier. However, if you're using it as a switch, let's say you have a, a, a circuit where here is our transistor. Okay. There's our VCC, and let's say here is an LED. Everybody loves LEDs. That's our load, right? And then this resistor here is basically just going to be your current limiting resistor for the LED. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set... Your base resistor, I guess this will be R5, we really didn't talk about it. R5, our base resistor, to about one-tenth. So, in a, in a switch operation, you kind of want to set R5, which is your base resistor. We'll call it RB, equal to one-tenth RC. And what that will do generally in most situations is send your transistor into the saturation range where you are getting the maximum output for the minimum heat actually this is the region where the transistor will put out the most heat i know a bunch of you're going to argue with me but the least op the, the least heating operations are fully closed and what i'll call fully open you may discuss below but anyway, that is the point of these four resistors. This resistor is a whole other story. I hope that helps somebody understand better 
what the point of the resistors and biasing a transistor are. Again, if you have any questions, put them down below. Whew. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, like, comment, share, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Uh, with all the sponsors pretty much gone now, the patrons are the only thing keeping the channel going. So, you notice there have been fewer videos because currently looking for other things to bring in more money. All right, guys, that's it. I'm out. Peace.